So tell us about the schools in Monrovia. The first school. Well, the first school, I understand, was <clears throat> not in the Oaks, but in the cottage, the first Monroe house in Monrovia, on Monroe Place. Uh, that Monroe hired a governess from Pasadena to come and teach his daughters. I think Milton and George may have been old enough that they didn't require instruction, but his two daughters probably were of an age where they did require student uh, instruction from a teacher. And then later on, I think they had classes at the Oaks. It may be that this was in the beginning, maybe after some other families had moved here. Anyway, one story I read was that the, that school outgrew the Oaks, and so they spent the rest, they finished the school year attending school in the Sierra Madre School District. But didn't he have to negotiate with, do some fancy dancing with Lucky well, Baldwin? Okay, well, in 1886, after the first lots were sold and people started to move here, sending school children to Sierra Madre was not practical, so Monroe decided to form a school district. And he checked and learned that there was a certain minimum number of pupils required. 15, I think it was. So if you did the tally, it was these two school-age daughters, perhaps. By that time, I think his brother, one of his brothers. Anyway, if you tallied up Monroe's and other local school school-age children, it did not <clears throat> reach the minimum number. So one story is that Monroe approached Lucky Baldwin and said, I can fix that. I have a couple of, I have a couple of families I will loan you. They have school aged children. They can camp in a tent until you can get the school district established. And so that's what happened. Another story I've seen is it took fifteen not children, it took fifteen petitioners to petition the establishment of a school district and that Monroe was able to round up 15 individuals who wanted a school district for their children. So someday, at the county superintendent of schools, I'm gonna see what's there. The borrowing of the families is far more interesting and more typical of Lucky Baldwin. So, the first school, public school of Monrovia, is conducted in Barnes Hall at Lemon Myrtle in Monrovia. That was <clears throat> in the building that still sits still there. there upstairs. And that was in 1886. That was, the, I think, the Monrovia School District. And then after Monrovia was incorporated, well, let's, I'm jumping ahead. S summer of 1887, the student body had outgrown Barnes Hall. So they began the process of planning a new school building. And a certain amount of money was, was necessary. So Monroe made some funds available. In fact, Monroe personally underwrote the public school that first started in 1886 out of his own pocket. Then, when sales in 1887 became quite brisk, a couple of the new tracks were put on the market at a premium. The idea being there's a certain base price, and anything that is realized from the sale of the lot over that base price goes to the school fund. So they. <clears throat> amassed enough money to go ahead with the plans. Luther Blair drew the design, the architectural plans for the school district. Started construction in 1887. I think open for classes. I don't think it was ready in September, but it might have been October. Six room schoolhouse, three rooms upstairs, three rooms downstairs. The rooms had sliding partitions between them so you could throw them together. 
or separate them as needed. Uh, separate stairways leading in. My grandmother told me that there was the girls' stairway and there was the boys' stairway going into the building. Where was this? It was at the northwest corner of Colorado and Mayflower. It also had a centrally placed bell tower with a bell to call the students to classes. <clears throat> that building was in use from 1887 until 1917 when they were finally able to pass a bond measure to finance the construction of a new school building to replace it. In the meantime, 1907, The Charlotte Avenue School opened in 1912. Mayflowers, I'm sorry, Wild Rose School opened. Also in 1912, they built an addition. I'm sorry, skipped one. 1903, the Ivy Avenue School. These are all elementary schools or junior high or elementary middle schools. Middle school? So the, the Ivy Avenue School was built across from the present Monrovia Post Office to relieve the crowding at Orange Avenue School. However, the high school was also bursting at the seams. So the high school district, because they were separate. So to go back for a minute, there was first the Monrovia School District of 1887. And then after Monrovia Incorporated, the district became the Monrovia City School District. And it was that when I was going through the system. Separate school district, separate board of trustees. They voted for a high school in 1893, and that was the Monrovia City High School. Same thing, separate board of trustees. So when the Ivy Avenue School was built, 1903, it was built by the elementary school district that had the funding to do it. The high school rented rooms in the Ivy Avenue School and moved the high school to Ivy Avenue also. So you had primary grades attending that building as well as high school students. And any teachers who had the right credential could teach both at the high school level and at the elementary school level. With the construction of the Charlotte Avenue School in 1907, I believe the elementary school classes went there, and then that freed up the Avenue, Abbey Avenue School for strictly high school use. And Charlotte Avenue was on Charlotte Avenue, which is now Canyon. Canyon, right. And what was the cross street? Very close to Huntington Drive, right north of Huntington Drive. Currently the location of the Nova Youth Unified School District offices and the Canyon Early Learning Center, but built as a two-story brick building in 1907, specifically for grade, elementary grades one through eight. The Linwood Avenue School was another school, probably built about 1907 or 1908. That housed elementary school, grades one and two. Next school was Wild Rose in 1912, I mentioned that. And then in, also in 1912, they added an entirely new building to the high school campus on Ivy, another two-story building designed by Allison and Allison, prominent LA architects. It had an outdoor Greek theater and served maybe a student body of maybe about 200, 250. 1917, which is back to Orange Avenue, the elementary school district was able to get a bond measure passed after several tries to replace the original building at Orange Avenue, which was done with the building I mentioned designed by Frank Eager that was Aztec inspired and looked really strange. Also, in the, then in the 20s, Santa Fe School about 1925 and Mayflower School also about 1925. Much later, Brad Oaks at Plymouth. High school campus, well, 
Dwardy and Arcadia both uh, both joined the Monrovia City High School District in 1920. The district later on became the Monrovia Arcadia Dwardy High School District after those two communities had joined. They outgrew the Ivy Avenue campus, so they looked for a new location for the high school. There were several sites available. The one that was chosen was the current site at Colorado and Madison. They passed a bond measure, I think, of $625,000 to build the original buildings on that campus and purchase the land. High school is there now. What about Huntington School? The story of Huntington. Well, originally Charlotte Avenue was not a segregated school. Over time, it became desegregated by the arrival of, a dish of newer black families in that area of Monrovia. And then finally, by the 1930s, it was an enforced segregation. I mean, first, it was a segregation of proximity to a school, and then later it was an enforced segregation. The building was damaged in the 1933 earthquake, as were, what was the one that the damage was visible. The, all the schools in Monrovia were examined for structural safety. After the passage of the Field Act, and the Field Act was a response to the damage that happened to the schools in Long Beach. There are horrible pictures of classrooms with ceilings draped over the desks and collapsed buildings. It happened about 5.30 in the afternoon, so there were no students. But people looked at those pictures and realized that if school had been in session, what might have happened? So Field, the Act was, was sponsored by a le legislator, can't think of his first name, last name obviously Field, and it said it was, it was a piece of legislation that made its way through channels the fastest of any piece of legislation ever introduced in the state capitol. They passed it post haste. And that created a, a review process of all existing buildings so they could be evaluated in terms of safety. In Monrovia, the older buildings such as the Wildrose School of 1912, the high school building of 1912, Charlotte Avenue School, and Orange Avenue School were all condemned as being unsafe in the event of a major earthquake. My elementary school principal, Ella Purdy, was the principal at the time the inspection took place. She was the one who took the inspectors all through the building. And her comment, years later, her comment was, I took them all the way through that building. There was not a crack in it. And then she said, and I still condemned it. This was, oh, 19 or 20 years later. She was still mad that they condemned her school building. By that time, she'd been transferred to Wild Rose. But she still remembered they condemned her school building, which meant they had to find temporary housing for the school, which was indeed a huge hardship temporary quarters until they could get things rebuilt, double sessions, etc. Charlotte Avenue had some structural damage that was visible. The parents of the teach of the students at Charlotte Avenue saw the damage and saw what condition the building was in and were reluctant to send their children there. The school board basically turned a deaf ear to their pleas to house their students in a building that was safe. And it wasn't until with the help of the NAACP in Los Angeles, the parents successfully sued to have the building closed and their students sent elsewhere for instruction. So that building was torn down completely, replaced with a brand new structure. In the case of Wild Rose, they demolished the perimeter brick walls, brick masonry walls, down to the foundation, and then rebuilt on, the original, on that foundation in wood frame with stucco and eliminated the second floor. Don Montgomery was principal at, Mayf at Wildrose years later, and he laughingly said, you know, you can go up in the attic space and you can still see the solid maple floors from the second story, class second story classrooms. They just cut it off at a certain level. 
They did the same thing with Clifton. They took the perimeter unreinforced masonry brick walls down to the foundation and then built, rebuilt single story with wood frame and stucco finish. Demolished Orange Avenue completely, replaced it with a brand new building. Mayflower of later construction and Santa Fe passed the initial inspection. They were finally replaced in the 60s.